racer to the pub. TikTok. Ah! Turbo. Top secret. Bye. Hello. Hello, mate. What's going on? Maniac. Bradley Walsh. Rory Rees. Derek Bell. Ah! Here we go. Paul Subaru. Brave spec. speed and how long have I been looking forward to saying that sentence here I am in the Cobra I'm actually parked up right at the top of the car park I am front row the festival of speed is widely regarded as the best show in the country if not the best show in the world it starts just over there there is a supercar parking zone over there first but we're in the public car park today. It's a four day event. And I'm here for all four of the days, so expect a lot of videos from this event. So it is early days, but elsewhere in the car park there is a TVR Chimera and a GR Yaris. We're gonna see presumably a lot of these today. I might even make a separate video for just car park spots, but we are early days. We've got GF Williams' Lotus Exige. But for now, I'm gonna head inside and see what's in the main show. So the first stop will be the performance parking zone Zone, which this RTR Mustang is heading into and oh it's shrunk in the wash. So we are in and as mentioned this is the performance parking zone which is just filling up a little bit but I think we should come back later when it is completely full because you can see all of the cars that have paid the extra bit of money to park up within the show including a Diablo VT and a Ferrari F40. And we've even got a recreation of the Ferrari 250 short wheelbase. And we have some stacked layers of thin flat pasta alternating with fillings such as ragu and other vegetables, lasagna. So we we start straight off at the Goodwood House, which every year has a very special monument in front of it. And this year, they seem to have forgotten to put any cars on it. The monument this year celebrates Lotus and simplifying and adding lightness, and that is the metaphor that it's going for. And here is the famous hill climb, which will be later filled with a lot more special vehicles than the golf buggies. And possibly my favorite section of Goodwood, we are starting straight in on the Cartier lawn. This year, perhaps the star of the lawn is the Bagani Huayra 760 VR. And we've got this, the British Brooklyn SV1 and these are impact absorbing bumpers for speeds of about 10 miles an hour. And vents that don't vent. And the Bristol Fighter, a car that could reach speeds of 210 miles an hour in 2006 with its Dodge Viper 8 litre V10. And I've just been distracted by a bug in a box. This is the brand new Bugatti Chiron Supersport. It's essentially almost a production version of the Supersport 300 Plus that was revealed a couple of years ago. This car has the same top speed of over 273 miles an hour. It's had a few uprated turbos on it as well. And there's the same long tail on the rear, which I really like. Oh, it seems we've got the new Aston Martin Victor just tucked away under there. And straight away, we've got some movements of cars. We have the Roma, there's the new 812 GTS and the SF90 driving by. They're all heading out to the track for the first display of the day. We've got the Mustang Mach-E. Oh, there's another one. That's not a new car. That's several years old. It's part of the Porsche museum it certainly is a museum piece we've got the 720s the mclaren senna orange with blue well it's kind of like a ready orange very brave we've got the new julia and behind oh another new julia and behind oh another new julia and we've got the hurricane next up that's a brave color and another uh, what what why are these mackies just everywhere They're like a, yes you can't rev can you the plague of the Mustang Mach-E. Well, we have a um, KN Ricer, could I say that? It's probably part of the Porsche Museum as well. And the shrunken Land Rover has made its return. It's, it's obviously wanting to be the star of the video. There it is. Down that way. <laughs> They're off to the pub. And over the years, my channel has changed somewhat. I used to film the supercars at Goodwood, and that's what everyone used to enjoy. So we've got a Lotus still here, a Lamborghini Urus. But uh, these days, people are more interested in cars like these. There is an R32 GTR over there in the HKS livery, looking really nice. We've got the Audi A4 
the A4 Quattro Touring Car, E36 as a Rover SD1, a Ford Capri. These are the touring cars of my childhood. We've got the Renault Laguna. Toka touring car vibes here. We've got the Alfa Romeo 1552 next to a Sierra RS500 Cosworth, a Rover SD1 again. We've got the Mini, we've got the Chevy Camaro. This one is a big fire shooter here out the side. A Hillman Imp as well next door and a Mark II Jag. We've got the NASCARs over here. That one resembling a Mustang somewhat. We've got some rally cars too. We've got the RS200, the Audi Quattro and some Pikes Peak cars, including the Ford Fiesta. Check out that splitter. Imagine seeing that on the road, although I say that, I've seen a few road cars with splitters of that level. Now this, I really love, this is the 206 WRC, and I had a little toy car of this exact car when I was a kid. And we've got a Subaru here with a lot of spotlights, the Citroen ZX rally car, the Red Bull C4, and the Subaru on the end as well. We have drift cars, there you go. These are the cars that you guys want to see the most. We'll start with the 350Z. We've got a Z. There's meant to be a Dodge Charger LS6 here. Oh, it's in its new camouflage wrap. We've got the GT86 here as well. I presume it doesn't have its boxer engine anymore. I can't see. Next up, we've got the R32 Skyline, which is next to an R33 in the Monster livery. We have the Falcon E92 and the S15 next to the Zenki S14. And an S13 with headlights deletes to complete the trio. And here is Steve Bagsy's GTR in its new look with a Liberty Walk wide body kit and a slightly up updated and tweaked livery. And each year I try to get down to the supercar paddock as soon as I can. So here we are. So straight away we have Zach's Garage's Koenigsegg Regera and a revving SCV12 race car. Let's have a look. It's electric. <laughs> the new McLaren 720S GT3X and another Bugatti Chiron this one is the Per Sport sporting a BGW on the back as to match the Huara BC Roadster next door oh the Koenigsegg is in its camouflage wrap as well and as the crowds disperse to guide through some Ferraris with the Roma at the front we've got a few more McLarens on display we've got the new Artura there's the Roma and the new Maserati MC20 this is my first time seeing this it's gonna be a lot of first times today. Got the 812 GTS and SF90 behind. 812 is doing some revs. There's the SF90. We've got the SF90 Spider in baby diarrhea yellow and the SP2 Monza. Activity is going on as the cars head out to the track. Oh, there's the new Aston Martin Valkyrie. Oh, I've got to capture that. Oh, he, he was a bit scared of that one. Jesus. And next up, we have McLaren with the Elva and some trousers. Why is it going that way? The track's over there. There's the new Artura McLaren's V6 hybrid. Oh, he's going out on track. It's my first time hearing a V6 McLaren other than the Formula One cars. We've got the new GT3. He's a bit steamy at the moment. Passing through. And the GT3 touring after that. And the new Jaguar F-Type. I think the Elvis just been doing laps. I don't know where he's going. The McLaren GT is next up to pass through. And the 765 LT in a purpley blue. Ah, right, the Elva was just waiting for the race car to pass through before. Check that out for a duo. We've got the GC3X. And the Elva. No one can hear it coming. Here's the new Lotus Savaya electric vehicle. Yep, that was silent and blocked by some trousers. As the Zenvo passes through, here is the MC20. seen this car for many years that is the Arash AF8 and the new Vanquish I say new 
it's the Callum Design Vanquish with the Rimac behind. Oh look, it's the new Huracan STO who is flying high with the nose lift up at the moment to pass over all of these really lumpy, bumpy stuff. Followed by the SVJ with the nose lift down like a good seize. Well done. Next we have Aston Martin passing through. There is the V8 Vantage Roadster. I really like the new mouth on the front of these. Yeah, I'd have one. Here is one in satin green and the Valkyrie is passing through. We heard this revving earlier. Let's see what it sounds like on the drive-by. Imagine seeing that on the roads. And next is the DBS Super Leggera. This one is the Valante with the roof up, even though the sun has actually come out somewhere. Somewhere. There's a mobility scooter racing the Lamborghini race car and actually winning. So that is the SCV12 that we heard revving earlier. Brands new from Lamborghini. Absolute amazing race car. Headlight delete as well. Someone's popping. Oh! Ah, right. Bikes are now passing through. Let me do my best. This one has one headlight, the other one has two, and he stands up. That's a good feature. Oh my god, everyone loves a white chaser. I just spotted that in the distance. Look, what a legend. So we now find ourselves in the trade section with this Mini over here, which you will notice has a BMW M3 V8. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I'm multiplying. There's some baby Adams. I mean, it's good, but it's not quite little tights. Or Bayside Blue. Or Adam C. What a lineup. I've entered a cartoon. I don't know what's going on. Hiya. <laughs> Come see us in the Bacon State. You can see it back. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> all the cars there. <laughs> we are the Legacies. We are at the Thaycom store. <laughs> <laughs> it's Nutley. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Here's one for the TikTok generation. And down here is another performance parking section that we shall have a look at. So there is a Lamborghini Aventador in Verde Ithaca next to a Caterham 7. And this Audi RS4 was actually owned by the Queen and royally protected. And we've got a dirty Lamborghini Aventador S next to a V8 Mustang in yellow. And right on the end is Carl Hartley's Pagani Huayra. Oh, we've got a Aston Martin Vanquish Zagato shooting brake next to a blue Ferrari 488 Spider. These are absolutely astonishing looking cars, especially the shooting brakes. And on the lawn we have a plaque to celebrate the life of Sterling Moss. We've got his 722 Mercedes in a box. So this section is a bit of me, a lot of Cobra kits on display. This one is a DAX, same engine as mine as well. We've got some 356 replicas as well. There's a 289 over there. There's Bradley Walsh over there as well. Oh, right, mate, how are you doing? Um, you're not wearing shoes. Just thought I'd let you know. How much are you? 9.50, is that, is that for an evening? We've got a vent on a door, but it's not an event at all. We have found DMO's twin turbo Lamborghini Huracan, Perth on Mante. He is loving life. And as with every meet I go to these days, the police are here. And we've just spotted a very wild GC86. My bad, it's a BRZ according to the badge, but I don't think there's a lot of BRZ left on it. That's almost thumbnail material, that. And just within the trade stand, we've got one Senna. We've got a Chiron and we have another Senna all on different specs we've got full carbon with gold full carbon in blue with blue and full carbon with yellow right guys over here we've got this top secret document which actually turns out to be an aston martin db9 that has been turned into homage of the db5 oh this is more my kind of regular content that right we've got some i don't know what these are moon vehicles pinching the floor Maybe they're cutting the lawn because it's required. And there's this thing. It's a six-wheeled thing. Honestly, some of the stuff you see at this event, it's just crazy. My first question is, how do you see out of it? Maybe you don't. Maybe it's self-driving. There are some openers there for maybe a flap. There's a hover jet thing. Oh, we are flying. We are flying. Flying in the air. Can I have a go? Oh, what is this? It's a Ford. It's a two-seater 
race car by Ford in green with white stripes. I have never seen this car before. I know nothing about it. They are really pushing for the future here and apparently the future is pedal power probably twinned with electric motors or there is this electric vehicle made almost entirely out of waste material as evident from its very 90s interior this one looks like a bmw i set a bubble car ah within the crowd there is a flying car ah no bother there's another one here oh there's an electric dog do you think he plays fetch? He looks like a good boy. Oh, oh, he's all sleepy, knackered after his... Oh, no. Hello. Oh, sorry. Oh, I've taken a wrong turn and I've ended up on the moon or some kind of other planet. So I don't know what's going on. What on earth is this? Air cleaning technology. Very futuristic. It's like a mummified car with huge wheels and slick tyres, so not currently road legal. Look at these maniacs. What are they doing? And I can only presume that this is self driving because while well, there are no controls just a television a table and a chair for an extra large person oh hello mate what are you up to just on a stroll um where's your mummy so as i filmed this yesterday bmw released the new 2 series and if you've already seen it you know what's about to happen here it is more controversial styling from bmw i mean the grills aren't quite as big as some of them but uh yeah, let me know what you think. I have found the Porsche Boxster. This is the 25th anniversary edition with some, I don't know, questionable wheels. Here we've got Genesis. A lot of companies are dropping their main manufacturer name and calling their products after what the models are called. Like you've got Genesis G70, Genesis G70 shooting brake, which is just an estate car. Seat do it as well with Cupra. It's almost suggesting that they're embarrassed at their brand name, but I don't know. Polestar as well, that's another one. There's lots of Polestars here. Here is Polestar, by the way, who have put big money this year into their stand at the Festival of Speed. These are just temporary structures, just for this weekend. Oh look, we have a Alfa Romeo 8C, which is opposite an Alfa Romeo 8C. This is the original name holder on which this car has been named after, the 8C Competizione. Oh, that's the way to watch the action. So we are now back on the track, waiting for Lotus to put on a huge display. I know what that's like dragging your hair along behind you. So the Lotus Monument actually goes along with an app to create a virtual display which we shall have a look at later and now we're waiting for the Lotuses to appear in front of the house. We have some violins, violas and double basses and cellos ready to play. So the first Lotus is the brand new Lotus Emira with its mid-mounted V6. So the new design has been inspired by the Avaya and I think looks really good. So that is the Emira. It can also come with a four-cylinder turbo from AMG. This one is the supercharged V6 that you can hear. And the Avaya on which it is inspired by is arriving. So this has 2,000 horsepower electric motors on all four wheels. And this particular model has been inspired by the John Player Special Livery, synonymous to Lotus, gold with black. This one with a lot more gold than normal. That is the prototype vehicle as well, already with a lot of rubber and flies on the front end from the hill climbs. There they are, right at the front of Goodwood. Ah, the strings are playing, the Lotus banners are appearing, and fireworks! Ah, there's explosions! Daytime fireworks! We now have the Lotus ah! Oh my god! So the cars are now racing around the sculpture and you can't, there we go, augmented reality is a thing. So venturing onto a Lamborghini stand we have another Huracan STO and a car that was actually revealed yesterday from when I speak. This is the new Lamborghini Ultima, the final Aventador in their lineup of models. This is the LP780-4 and is aesthetically similar to the Aventador S just with the SVJ's exhaust and is what they say the perfect combination of all models of Aventador's to have existed to complete the legendary lineup. And gazing over the STO is Mr. Rory Reed in the Lamborghini enclosure. Well he's in a suit. So apparently if you go down to the woods today you're in for a big surprise there's some tire smoke and skids. Jaguar have their F-type R's giving out drift experiencing around the skid farm. There he goes. Oh, coming back around the corner. Lovely. He's been doing this all day. The 
Turbo Est on Porsche stand has a set of brave wheels on display and someone smudged their fingerprint on the bonnet. As well as a signal yellow 992 GT3. Where's security when you need them? She's drawing on the car. Oh, it seems there's a Porsche owner's display where owners of any variant of Porsche can park up, including a 944. So I don't know how much horsepower is on display on this field, but over there we've got three. These days with these personalized number plates, you need absolutely no car knowledge to be able to know what model you're looking at. Oh, what a day. Oh, he's given up. He needs a bigger lawnmower. Honestly, could they have not given him like a, a sit on lawnmower? Is this really necessary? He's just churning it up. It's hilarious. He's made one line. If that, well, jolly good job. Well done to you, sir. And there is another section that some people don't know about, which is right at the top of the hill, which you can get a tractor for. So I'm going to see if I can queue, get the tractor up and show you the rally stage. So we have a whole new section of the Festival of Speed where all of the rally cars are housed, including a classic A110 and even a 190E rally car next to an SD1. We've had SD1 touring cars, now rally. There's a, well, it's not a Toyota Celica GT4, this is an MG. And of course there are some Quattros and we have a Mark II Escort that has just started up to go out on track. That's cool. I'm loving the Opal Calibra here as well. And the TR7. And the Lancia 037 and Metro 6R4. It's astonishing seeing all these 80s, 70s and 90s rally cars all lined up. What other shows put on such a lineup like this? The Fiat's had a bad day. So has the poor Subaru. Oh, there have been quite a few casualties. It's a bit more open and spread out up here. Fewer people around and cars just driving ready to go out on the rally stage. Oh, I'm in the way. But I think due to my age, my favourite car that is up here is the 2001 Ford Focus rally car from the World Rally Championship in the Martini livery and uh, a very used condition. And in the lineup, ready to go, we've got the 6R4 Metro, we've got the Evo 10, we've got the Subaru Legacies in front of that as well. A few more around there, including some Quattros and another Fiat 124. And they've got some pretty large rabbits in these woods to recover today. But then a little further down, we've got a different type of off-roader, all ready to go out, some jumps and bumps, including a slightly tweaked 6R4 from what we saw on the rally stage. So we're just walking back to where we were earlier with the drift cars and they're actually just about to go out on track. So the final section of the day is the main paddock where most of the competition cars are housed. And there's Chris Evans halfway through his radio production. One of the craziest cars of the day is this little Mook Murray car with Derek Bell in the background enjoying the tiny little car. Ooh, look at this golden SCG with McLaren F1 style three seating interior with scaled seating. Oh, that is a brave spec. As well as external gauges. Oh, we've got the Team Lotus race van. What piece of impressive machinery have we got inside? We have, oh, it's, it's Arlo. We've got a Ferrari 250 GTO, this one in particular owned by Pink Floyd's Nick Mason. Lambo have their new Super Trofeo Evo 2. Looks wild next to the McLaren F1 GTR. Oh, check this out, hidden around in this paddock. We've got the BMW M1 Pro car. And we've got a little Porsche lineup starting with the 550 Spyder. We've got a 718 RSK. I've actually driven one of these. Very heavy clutch for such a small car. We've got the 904 Carrera GTS, a 911, a 962. We've got Moby Dick over here, the 935. And of course, the legendary 917K. This one in the Martini livery with a March Porsche IndyCar and a GT3 Cup. Porsche are really hitting the spot today. We've got the 962 next to the 956. Beyond the X19 and the Stratos, we have a lineup of Martini Lancias. There's a very high up E30 M3 over there. Oh, the F40 is on the move. Are they 
tents up there. I've entered a garden party. But we end the video pretty much where we started back at the car park. So there will be a full video of a walk around the car parks all four days, which I am here for. But that was a quick highlight of the Goodwood Festival of Speed, the best car show in the world. What can I say? So I hope you enjoyed that video. Go follow me on Instagram for the weekly updates and highlights about these meets that I go to. I'm going to head home in better weather than we had before. It did rain a little bit, so it should be a nicer journey. So look out for future videos from the Festival of Speed. But for now, thanks for watching.